Good morning. My name is Maggie Kolb and I'm the Executive Director of Communications for the Olathe Public Schools. I'm thrilled to be here today to facilitate a conversation between Board of Education President Joe Beveridge and Superintendent John Allison. Welcome to you both. Thank you. It's great to be here. We're here today to talk about the state of the district. I think it's safe to say that this has been the most unique year, the most challenging year, a year we've had to, to pivot and change course a number of times. But I'd love to know from you, John, you could talk a little bit about where we're at with the district and, and what the latest update is. It has been a challenging year. Um, when school was canceled last March, nobody really expected that. We expect a little extended spring break and then into what would the fall look like. So it's it's been challenging as, as we prepared for uh, a future in our schools that we just weren't sure what that would look like. Happy to say that we, um, as we've transitioned into this school year, we now have all of our elementary students back um, five days a week, and our secondary are currently in a hybrid. So they're, they're attending um, part of the week and also um, doing remote learning uh, the other part of the week. So it, it has been a challenge. I can't say um, a big enough thank you to all of our staff, our teachers, our principals, everyone that's, that's helped make this possible as we've really had to evolve since the very first day of school to make sure that we're providing the very best education for our students as we move forward. And there have been some challenges and I'm sure there will continue to be some challenges as we're trying to all adapt to a world uh, in which we're living in with a pandemic. But um, that commitment to make sure that we're providing the best educational opportunity for our students, um, pandemic or not, ha hasn't, uh, hasn't waived and um, our, our staff and everybody has, has been fantastic in helping make sure that uh, we, we continue to serve our students. And our parents and our students have been incredibly patient and, and also willing to evolve on whatever our educational model looks like uh, as, we've, as we started this school year. And I'm sure we'll have some evolution that will occur before the end of the school year. But just a, a huge thank you to get us where we are today. We all know the important role of the Board of Education. And this year, more than ever, the Board has been put into a spotlight and has received a lot of feedback from patrons. We've welcomed a lot of, of parents and community members to speak at the Board of Education meetings. Joe, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about how our board members are doing, how they're handling this unique situation and helping the district move forward, and then also sort of the board's goals and hopes for the future. Thank you for that. Um, suffice it to say, um, I don't think the volunteers on the school board could have ever imagined the pressure that uh, we'd be under uh, trying to lead the school district during a global pandemic. Um, but I have to say, I'm immensely proud of how our school board has handled this difficult situation, um, especially uh, or even when we don't uh, always agree on things. Um, the board has worked hard to listen to our community. We can't always agree with everyone in our community, but we do work hard to listen to our parents, our students, our teachers, um, and our staff. Uh, we hear you and uh, we are listening and we are doing our best to make sure that we are making decisions that uh, set up the school district for uh, the most success that we can have uh, during this trying time. We have an amazing superintendent, we have uh, great staff, we have the best teachers, and uh, we just want to let them do their job. Uh, we also appreciate the work that they do. Um, you know, things change, uh, you know, we're spinning around as we learn more, uh, about the virus and we appreciate uh, everyone's agility, everyone's open-mindedness uh, as we move forward. And uh, the last thing I'd say on goals is, um, you know, the Board of Education is just doing its best job to try to unite the community. It's not easy. There's a lot of divergent opinions about, out there about the uh, virus and how schools should work. Um, but like I said at my very first board meeting as I was president, um, it's not us versus them. It's the community uh, versus the virus, and uh, our best chance for success is if we're united in that fight. Um, all of our students in the district have spent some time learning from home. John, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about some of the technology changes this year, from our new learning management system to devices, and then also how we are supporting our families in need um, through technology. Be happy to, Maggie. Technology's been one of those areas that was definitely a challenge. As we began to work last spring, 
Uh, of course, our, our high schools are one-to-one, -one, our middle schools were one-to-one -one with iPads, but we were not one-to-one -one with a device at the elementary school. So um, a, a lot of work had to be done in, in planning to get us where we were for the first day of school and making sure that every student had a device. So we um, had to purchase almost 10,000 devices. Those had to be um, distributed and, and set up. Uh, we began to work uh, learning services and, and technology, work together to find a learning management system. And why that's so key is we needed a, a common way in which our students and our staff could interact, where lessons could be presented and assignments um, turned in and, and attendance taken and all those, those types of things. We wanted to make it as simple as possible for our students and our families and our staff. And to do that typically is a year to 18 month process. So being able to identify Synergy as our learning management system, to, to get that up and running for the start of school was, was really a, a, an incredible feat by our uh, technology services and our learning services in, in preparation for the school year. And then having to train 3,000 staff on how do you use that learning management system um, along with the new technology. We also knew from last spring that we had a number of our families that didn't have reliable access to the internet. Um, and we had done some surveys to determine just how many. So the, the board committed to um, purchasing hotspots so we could make sure that the lack of internet access didn't impact a, a student's ability to access learning. So great deal of work, all those moving pieces. Um, anytime you're dealing with technology, we all know it's not 100% perfect. And, and of course, we had some bumps along the road, but uh, I think as we've continued to progress and folks have gotten the, kind of the handle on that, um, we've, we've been able to, to maximize the use of the technology for instructional purposes. And it's not only served us well for this fall, but I think will as we continue to move forward. The theme of this year's breakfast is look for the helpers. This district is filled with helpers. John, can you talk a little bit about uh, all the helpers that are in our schools? I, I'd be happy to. Um, there, wow, there are just so many as I think about everyone that that's helps our schools and, and particularly this year as we've uh, prepared to bring students back. Um, first, uh, our students, they, they've been incredibly resilient. It hasn't mattered what learning format we've been in, um, they've, they've accepted it and, and done their very best. And as I said earlier, our, our, our staff, um, they've continued to evolve and, uh, and adapt and done what's necessary, not just to help our students academically and instructionally, but social emotionally as well. Our food service who started last spring um, providing both lunch and breakfast for so many of our students and, and families across the district and continue to do so throughout the summer and, and into the school year. Our custodians who have had to learn to use new equipment, um, that they, uh, cleaning protocols, everything that we need to do to make sure that uh, our, our buildings are as clean and ready in a, in a pandemic as, as possible. The list just kind of goes on and on. Um, and, and of course, the Olathe Public Schools Foundation, who ha have worked tirelessly to help provide for our families in so many different ways, for our teachers, um, to make sure that, that we're continuing to put our best foot forward um, in this um, challenging times. And they, they've continued to do phenomenal work, which I think is just such an example of how our community reaches out through the um, Olathe Public Schools Foundation and so many others to, to provide support um, and to make sure that the, the Olathe Public Schools continue to be the very best. Uh, Joe, can you talk a little bit about what our helpers, our community can do to assist our schools? Sure, thank you so much for that question. Um, I guess I would say first and foremost, um, I would urge um, all of you out there, if you can, to consider being a substitute teacher. Um, we, are, we as most school districts are in desperate need of substitute teachers and that only increases as um, we get kids into school. Um, you don't have to have an education background to be a sub. Um, and if this is something that you think you can do or you think you are interested in, please consider calling our um, main offices and they'll get you in touch with the right person or uh, visit our website. It's prominently on our website. Uh, this would be a huge help for us. Um, second, uh, this is an easy one. Um, just send a, 
a note of encouragement to a teacher or a staff member or a principal. Um, these are hard times for everyone, and um, th they're no different than all of us. And um, I can tell you firsthand uh, when it's when you're going through a difficult time or you're having a difficult day because of uh, the pandemic and and all of that. It it just the feeling you get when you get an email from somebody or a note from somebody uh, that says thank you for for your work or uh, encourages you. It, it just uh, brightens your day. And so I would encourage uh, parents, uh, students, uh, anyone out there to uh, thank a teacher, thank staff, uh, thank your principal for the work that they do. And uh, the last thing, uh, last but not least, is um, help out the Olathe Public School Foundation. I've been on the board for about five years now, and uh, it just seems like every year I learn about a dozen or more new things that the Olathe Public School District or Olathe Public School Foundation is doing uh, for our community. They really are on the front lines. Um, they're helping out our students. They're helping out our parents. Um, they're helping out our teachers. They do great work, and I would encourage you to donate or uh, volunteer your time to help them out. So John, to close out our conversation today, from your perspective, what does the future look like in the Olathe Public Schools? Well, I'm incredibly proud to be the, the superintendent of the public school system, and our, our future is incredibly bright. Even with everything that we're all dealing with, both at school and in our society right now, what I'm amazed about is the resiliency, the adaptation, the innovation, everything that ha has gone in to getting the school year started. And I think it really has shown me that it doesn't matter what happens, that our community will, will pull together. We may not always agree 100%, but in the end, we want the very best for our students. And what has made Olathe so unique and special as a school district is our community. And that, uh, that community effort um, and that coalesces in the Olathe Public Schools Foundation, I think, is a, is a perfect example whether it's business partners or families or, or others that are there to support our teachers, to support our students, and to make sure that our schools continue to move forward. So whether, as we had planned for um, refocusing on our uh, career and technical education programs, with, with the inclusion now of pre-K-12 um, technology, it's going to open doors for us. Um, we've learned a lot, um, things that, that aren't necessarily the way we want to instruct and some incredible ways through uh, whether it's remote or hybrid for, for us to think about instruction for our students. And it, even why this could be seen as a, as a negative time, it's not because we're, we're gonna continue to innovate, support each other and take uh, our, our latest students to the next level. So I think the, the future for our school district is incredibly bright, and this is just a, another challenge that we have um, been able to, to overcome, and we'll continue to, to do the incredible things that have made Olathe so special in the past, and we'll continue to do so, do so as we move forward in the future.